Welcome to Faith. Welcome, Dr. Mary Neal. Thank you for joining us today. First of all, we'll have prayer. I will. Uh, second, we'll have prayer by Willie. Reading of the Word by Sheila. First, and we are ready. Oh, Second Chronicles fifteen. During those dark times, Israel was not safe. of all, just in case we have anyone out there that has not been adopted into the family of God, the Bible teaches us how we're justified by our faith. If we believe on God and we believe that God raised his son, Yeshua the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, from the dead, we're justified by our faith. Then the Bible teaches us we're to confess that which we believe. If we confess with our mouth the Lord Yeshua, the Lord Jesus, and believe in our hearts, that God has raised him, that Yeshua, Jesus, from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For out of the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and confession is made unto salvation. Romans 10 and 13 says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of Adonai, that's the name of the Lord, shall be saved. Mark 16, 16, He that believeth, he that continue to believe, and is baptized, shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Proverbs 28, uh, 28, 13 said, He that confesses and forsakes his sins shall have mercy. But he that confesses and forsakes not his sins will not prosper. First John 1 and 9, If we confess our sins, he faithfully shall to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Praise God. Thank you all once again for joining us. We're continuing with our study in John chapter number 17. Uh, we started that, I'm thinking, last Wednesday night. And uh, Sunday morning, I thought we would get back into it where we stopped off. I think I read one verse, but it was so many different references that we used with John chapter 17 that we actually did not get back into John 17. And so hopefully we'll get back in there today if it be the Lord's will. But as I was studying today, he gave me more information uh, to uh, help us just in case we can't understand that word one. Uh, many times we use the word one again because we're focusing on John chapter 17, that main verse where Yeshua Jesus says, Father, I pray that they all be one just as we are one. And so I put a lot of information out there on Facebook on this video just in case anyone want to research and study uh, these words that deal with uh, the word one. So this is portion number two. Revelation, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding the word one. He has numerous, uh, many, polis, polis. Now I'm going to spell it just in case I mispronounce uh, it. One of the words is H-E-I-S, and that's in Hebrew. The other one is H-A-P-O-S-V-S. And then the other one is P-O-L-Y-S. And the last one is P-O slash L-U possibly S. And so it the same thing, but it means the word one in the book of Hebrew. So we're going to use many verses that deal with that word one as we go forward. Actually, uh, when I was doing it today, the Lord reminded me in my last book, Show and Tell, 
I had did research. So the only thing I had to do is get the same information out of my book with all the scriptures starting with Genesis that teaches us and give us a good understanding of the word one. So when we look at God the Father and Yahshua the Messiah, Jesus the Christ, we can understand that word one better as we are one. We is plural. Us is plural. And that's what look, the Lord wants us to be one. Uh, I remember Sheila read that scripture a little earlier. Uh, do you remember uh, what scripture that was you read? Sheila, she probably walked away. Sheila, you there? You walked away. She probably walked away. So anyway, so it deal with all the things that going on today and uh, what happened. Uh, we was uh, last Monday night. We was looking at unifying uh, the people of God number one, but unifying them in the Word of God. So we can be on one accord. We can agree with the word of God. Because if we can agree with the word of God, we can agree with each other. If we cannot and will not agree with the word of God, we can't agree with each other. So the first thing to bring unity again, perfect, complete, is to get unified in the word of God. And this is the body of Christ. We are to be unified. When it comes to the word of God, so we can become that perfect one as Yeshua prayed that we could be that perfect, meaning complete one. And the spirit teaches one, the spirit teaches one to become one just as, that means just as Yeshua did. The one has nothing to do with, the one has nothing to do with one world order as some believes because i have heard someone say that when you speak of the word one they say oh they're trying to get this one world order that has nothing to do with one word order there will never be one world order for everybody is ordered the same way doing the same thing believing the same thing so this has to do with uh, becoming one in the word of God, one in the body of Yeshua the Messiah, number one. And then those who may come into Yeshua and believe on Yeshua through their own word. Solving these puzzle mysteries through letting the scriptures explain themselves. I'm not reading those scriptures because we read them. Uh, last Monday night, if you want to go back and look at the video, or also I think I may, may have quoted a couple of them last night, uh, yesterday morning, actually, in our service. So that's Galatians 3.28 and John 17. Help. Help unify. When I say help unify, because the more people become one, we can help more people. So that's why it came to my spirit to help unify the spiritual body, number one. The spiritual body. Because when we're in Yeshua Jesus, we become spirit. That's what we are as God is spirit. As Yeshua is the spirit. The rest, our coach, Holy Ghost is the spirit. When we are in Yeshua, we are spirits as well. So that's why I said help unify the spiritual body of the Messiah, Christ, as one spirit. And those who confess the truth through their own words. Because there may be some people believe, but sometimes they are confessing the wrong thing. And as we said on yesterday, words are very important. You need to be careful what kind of words are coming out of your mouth. A good example, if you say you're no good, you begin to think you're no good. Because we are justified by the words we we speak. So that's why it's so important to speak the correct words. Just as, let me see, yes, just as God the Father and His Son, Yeshua, Yeshua, Jesus. And the reason I say Yeshua, Y-H-U-S-H-U-A, because if you go back and you look at the word in Hebrew, 
that's the root word. Uh, Yeshua is short. And it's Jesus in English. So that's why I say Yeshua, Yeshua, Jesus. And most of the time, I will say Yeshua, like Yahweh, Yeshua. Both. Both are one in the same spirit. Just as all should be, but not the same being. Notice what I said. Both. I'm speaking of God the Father and Yahshua, Yahshua Jesus. They both are one in the same spirit, just as all should be, but not the same being. Because when people think of the word one, they think the same. One again. Yahshua, Yahshua Jesus prayed in John 17. Nina pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe, many trust, on me through their words. Now, when you go back to uh, John 17, verse 9 through, you notice he's not praying for the world. But this is when he's going to come back later and pray for those who will believe on him through their own words. Other words, through their confession. What coming out of their mouth? What are you confessing about me? So I'm taking you back to John 17, 9. I'm not going to uh, do whole uh, the whole chapter again because we went down to verse 14. That's what we're picking up. But just to show how at one time he did not pray for the world. And that's in John 17, 9 and 10. I'm praying for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given to me. In other words, those the Father gave to Yeshua, Jesus, because they are yours. Indeed, all I have is yours, and all you have is mine. And in them, I have been glorified. Well, on last Monday, I expounded on that, where sometimes people, at least I think I think I did, I can't remember, but uh, many times people, they feel like the Rosh HaKosh had not fell on anyone. And I'm thinking this in John chapter 8, where the Holy Ghost, the Rosh HaKosh had not fell on them because they had not glorified Yeshua Jesus. And that has to do with they did not confess who he was. They said, this is Joseph's family, the son of Mary. They never said the son of God. So that's why the Rosh HaKosh had not come upon them. Uh, portion number two, continue in John 17, 14 through 26. Revelation, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding the word one. And I gave you those Hebrew words, so I'm not going back there again. Understanding again the word one. They shall be one flesh. Well, I was speaking with my sister, uh, I think it was, yeah, last Wednesday. And we were speaking about, it's amazing how some people say they do not need to read the Old Testament. And as we say, you can't understand the new. If you do not study the old, you need to go back to see how things began. So this is in Genesis. This is where I get my perfect understanding of the word one. Because it's speaking of two. But it's speaking one. One of the same spirit as we are to be one of the same mind. One of the same purpose. So these are the things I took out from my book today. And if you do not have it, get it. It's a lot of information and revelation in that book. Praise God. I wrote it through the Rush Harkos Holy Ghost. They shall be one flesh. That has to do with Adam and Eve. They were supposed to be one. That's Genesis 2, 24. But they were two separate individuals. But they still was to be one. As a husband and wife, they were to be one. But they're still what? Two individuals, as you have twins, as we have twins, they are individuals, but they're like one, right? Because 
sometimes you can't tell them apart. Sometimes you look at them, you're calling them the same name or whatever because they look so much alike, but they're two individuals. They have their own ways, their own mind. One may like this more, one may like that more, but many things, they like time, they like the same thing, but they are different. Behold, the man is become as one of us. That's a perfect example. That means Adam had become as one of us. That's plural. That's in Genesis 3, 22. That they all may be one. That's John 17. I quoted that earlier. You are all one in Yeshua the Messiah, Christ Jesus. That's Galatians 3, 28. We went through that on last Monday night, how this shows us what unity really is, is to become one. Galatian, no more, uh, there's no more Jew, no more Gentile, no more born, no more free, no more male, no more female. You're all one. So that's in what? Galatian 3.28. But notice, you're all one in. It's not speaking to the one that's not in. Because that's why it says when we're in Yahshua, that's what makes us one. That's why it says that they all, uh, let me go back. That they all may be one. You are all one in. That means once we're in him. Where if we're not in him, we can understand how we are not made one of the same spirit. Because we are out of him. We are not in him. So that one is, again, doo -doo -doo, uh, Galatians 3.28. That they were all of one mind. That means they had the same mind. To do something, even when people build the tile, uh, uh, try to build it up to heaven, they was all unified. They all wanted to do that, and that's why they were separated again. That's why we have so many different languages which translated tongues today. That they were all of one mind, the Second Samuel nineteen fourteen, were also of one mind to make David king. That's 1 Chronicles, uh, 1 Chronicles 12, 38. So that means they was in agreement. That's unity to make David king. That means they didn't go against each other. They all was in agreement. So that's what that word one mean as well. With one mind, they plotted together. See, they had the same mind. The same mind to do something. So you look at the word they, you know it could not be speaking of one. So it says with one mind they plotted together. That's Psalms 83, 5. I'm just paraphrasing. I'm not using the whole verses. So go back and study those just in case you have not. With one mind and one voice. That's Romans 15 and 6. Other words, we're to have that same mind that's in Yeshua. That one voice is to speak the same thing. Be of one mind. That's Second Corinthians thirteen eleven. We are to all have that one mind, that same mind that's in Yeshua, Jesus. Being like minded. That means we have the same mind. Our mind is alike. Being like minded, being one in spirit, and of one mind. That's Philippians. Chapter 2 and verse 2. So again, we stopped off on John 17, 14, 26, but we was using some verses last night that I did not complete. So I'm picking up on, uh, I think I can have a couple more before I go back into John chapter number 17. But these are powerful chapters, and that's what we do. We do word searches. That's how I do my study. I take a word and I exhaust that word. I mean, I look for information of, about that word. See how that word is being used so I can get a good understanding as the word save, deliver, uh, shall, shout, and things like that. We search those words out. Should. Uh, 1515, this is where we stopped yesterday. Complete Jewish Bible. I no longer call you slave because a slave doesn't know 
what his master is about. King James said what his master is doing, I believe. But I have called you friends because everything I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. Well, again, we were looking at secret things, how they was hidden from the foundation of the world. But Yahshua came to make those things known to us. And that's why he's telling his disciples, because you have to study the chapter to understand, well, if we love him, we are to keep his command. And if we keep his commandment, everything his father uh, made known to him, he tells them he have made known to them. Let us solve this puzzle, mysteries again. Let the scripture explain themselves. John 16, 1, 3 we was using this yesterday with uh, John chapter 17, 1 through 3. So I'm not going to uh, read it again, but to understand what life eternal is, that was John 17, 1 through 3. And you go right back to John 1, 3, because we do have people on tonight that was not on, I'm sure, yesterday. And you see it again where he said they will... Uh, he said, they will do these things because they have understood neither the Father nor me. And so when you go to John 17, he said, they don't, don't know me nor my Father. So John 16, 1, 3 is a reference back to John chapter number 17, 1 through 3. John 14, 20, 25. When that day come, this is Yeshua Jesus teaching. When that day come, you will know that I am united with my Father. See, united me like one. So when that day come, you will know that I'm united with, and that's what you'll get the word, with, with my Father and you with me. So the same way he united with his Father, in other words, he in his Father, his Father is in him, and he's to be in us. When that day come, you will know that I'm united with my Father and you with me and I with you. Whoever has my commands, many commandments, and keep them is the one who loves me. And the one who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I will love him and reveal, meaning manifest myself, to him. Other words, whatever his Father made known to him, he wanted want to make it known to us he want to manifest it to us but in order for that to happen you need to make sure you really love him and the only way you can make sure you really love him is when you keep in what he said that's why he says again whoever has my commandments that means the person they have those commandments and keep it not only you have them maybe on Sunday, but you continue to keep them. It's the one who loves me. Now, many people would say, I love the Lord with all my heart and all my soul and all my strength, and I have the rich heart, but I don't need to obey him. That's foolishness. That means the devil blind our eyes. We can't see, and that's what, therefore, we stumble because we do not understand the word of God. And the one who loves me will be loved by my Father. Notice, the one who loves me first will be loved by my Father. Because that's why the Bible said, He that, uh, he that, he that loveth him that begot also love him that is begotten of him. That's in 1 John or 2 John. And so, which means we're to love God, and we're to love his Son, and we're to love each other. That's three ways. The same way the Father is in Yeshua. Yahshua is in us. That's three way. And he's speaking of spirit, not bodies and bodies. And that's what sometimes our carnal mind think of, bodies and bodies. No, spirits and spirit. So when he said, I in him and he in me, well, he's speaking of spirit, not bodies. And sometimes that's what can confuse us. Complete choice by uh, 22. Judas, not the one from Scarlet says, what had happened, Lord, that you are about to reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Well, number one, 
he want to reveal himself to those who are in him, not to the world. Because when we are not in him, how can he make himself known to us? Now, that doesn't mean we do not know the word of God sometimes, because many times people know the word, certain words, know what God said, because even many words come right from the Bible. As we were speaking about that the other day, light bread. That come from the Bible. Love. That come from the Bible. Hate. That come from the Bible. Forgiveness. That come from the Bible. So a lot of words we use come where? Right from the Bible. Books. Prophets. So forth. Yeah, prophetess. All those words are in the, in the Bible. And so some people feel like, well, I don't need to read the Bible. But you're quoting words from the Bible. You just don't know it. <laughs> What have happened, Lord, that you are about to reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Because he wanted to reveal himself to those whom his father gave him first of all. If someone loved me, he would keep my words. We will come. Now notice that. If someone loved me, he would keep my word. We will come. Not I'm going to come. We will come to him and make our home with him. So when he says, if someone loves me, he will keep my word, we will come. That means him and his father. We will come to him and make our home with him. Well, that means inside of us. He's not speaking of a house, like this house. No, this house. We're the household of God. So that means when we obey him, him and his father will come and abide within us. That means make their home with us. That's 23. That you'll answer him. If someone love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him, and we will come. See? There it is. We will come to him and make our home with him. Someone who doesn't love me doesn't keep my word. Well, how many times you hear people say, oh, no, you don't have to worry about that. Nobody can do that just as long as you're saved. That someone doesn't know. <laughs> so therefore, they don't have eternal life because eternal life is to know the Father and His Son. So how can you know them if you don't know the Word? Listen what he said. Someone who doesn't love me doesn't keep my Word. And the words you are hearing is not my own, but that of the Father who sent me. As we said uh, earlier, I think it was yesterday or Monday, one of those days. If I tell someone, you say you love the Lord, but you're not obeying him, you're lying. And they're going to get angry. But that's what the word said. I didn't write it. And so many times people get angry with the messenger, but not with the creator who created the word, who words are in the Bible, in the holy books. You know, we put the word Bible. I don't know why they put it Bible. It should be the Holy Scriptures or the Holy Book. 25. I have told you these things while I am still with you. But the Counselor, the Rosh Hakosh, Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name will teach you everything. You see? He want to teach what? Teach us everything. Not just John 3.16. And some people, that's the only thing they know. And then they say, uh, you say, what are your favorite book? Oh, the book of Psalms. Okay, what does Psalms say? Well, I don't know. I just heard the book of Psalms really good. Listen what he says. Whom the Father was sent in my name will teach you everything. That is, he will remind you of everything. I have said to you. Other words, that's what the Rosh HaKodesh would do. Remind us of everything Yeshua has said. Continue with John 17, 14 through 26. I have given them your words. Well, who did he give it to? Everybody? No. We looked at that um, the other day. How he was telling his disciples there was certain thing about the kingdom he was teaching. It was for them to know, but those who was outside, it wasn't for them to know. 
So he gave the word to his followers. So that's why he says, I have given them your word and the world hates them. Do you know you have many haters when you stand on the word of God? Oh, you think you're holier than thou. And you didn't go back and read why they thought they was holier than thou. I have given them your word and the world hate them because they do not belong to the world. See, we either belong to God or we belong to the world. We belong to the God and Father of Yeshua Jesus or we belong to the God of this world, which is Satan. The Bible tells us Satan is the God of this world. He is a deceiver from the beginning. And I can truly say he's the only one I hate. I hate the devil. And I try to destroy him every chance I get. I have given them your word and the world hate them because they do not belong to the world just as. I love that word. Uh, Monday night I went through many scripture dealt with just as. Just as I myself <clears throat> do not belong to the world. Although he came to the world, but he did not belong to the world. He belonged to God. Now, now, who is he speaking to? He's praying to the Father. I don't ask you to take them out of the world, but you protect them from the evil one because they were still in the world. He was going to leave the world, so he wasn't praying that God would take them out of the world at that time. We know we're all going to leave this world one day. He said, I don't ask you to take them out of the world because it goes back, kind of reminds me of 1 Corinthians Chapter 5 says, you need to go out into the world, but if any brother does these things, put them out of the church. And we say we are not to judge those in the church. Is that because we are unlearned? I don't ask you to take them out of the world, but to protect them from the evil one. Thank you, Father, for protecting us from the devil, because the devil is up to no good. He hates us. He want to destroy us. And I hate him and I want to destroy him too. 16. They do not belong to the world. That's Yeshua Jesus. Just as I do not belong to the world. So those disciples, remember he started out praying uh, that the Lord would what? He would like uh, uh, put them aside for holiness. He would sanctify them through the truth for holiness, separate them. And see, many times, the Lord is trying to separate some people, but they don't want to be separated. See, when he separates you, that's when he re really can get your attention. I remember years ago, he separated me from many things for, for, for some time. I did not watch TV. I went to church. I studied the Bible. I went to jail ministry. Everything I was doing was just ministry. Because he separate us. Because he want to what? Get our attention and, 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 and teach us. That's the way he said he what? He sanctified himself. And he said, Father, sanctify them through your truth because your word is true. Well, how can the word sanctify us when we refuse to re read it, believe it, and receive it? You can't do it. We must study the word of God and let the word of God sanctify, cleanse us. From all that mess that Satan want in us. Hallelujah. He says, again, they do not belong to the world just as I do not belong to the world. Your word is true. Separate them by what? Mean of the truth. Set them apart for holiness. See, we're to be holy. Not just righteous. Holy. We are made righteous when we're justified by our faith. That's why we're, the ungodly is justified by their faith. And therefore, they are no longer ungodly. They are made righteous. But sometimes we just keep doing ungodly deeds. Separate them apart for holiness by meaning of the truth. What is true? Your word is true. That's why truth came through. Yeshua the Messiah. The law was given by Moses, but Yeshua came to do what? Bring forth truth. So he's praying for them and telling God to separate them 
by the word of truth, because this word is the truth. Just as, another just as, just as you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. Well, remember, Yeshua came to the world. God sent him into the world. So that's why he said, just as you sent me into the world, God sent Yeshua into the world. Now, he's going to turn around, and he sent those apostles, disciples into the world, and he's sending many people into the world. I have sent them into the world. That's why the scriptures say you must go out into the world. But if a brother do those things, you come from among them. On their behalf, I am setting myself apart for holiness, so that they too may be set apart for holiness by means of the truth. Now think about that. On their behalf, I'm setting myself apart for holiness. Well, think about generations and generation to come. What happened if we all set ourselves apart from the world system? What happened if we all set ourselves apart and be great examples for our family? Just think about that. That's why he says, on their behalf, I'm setting myself apart for holiness. You know, sometimes we do not do things we sometimes want to do because we don't want our children to see us do it, right? <laughs> So that they too may be set apart for holiness by means of the truth. See, the truth will help us to separate ourselves from some stuff. God want to separate us. That's why, again, he said, come out from among them, my sons and daughters, and I will do what? And I will receive you. Verse 20. I pray not only for these, but also for those who will trust in me because of their, what? Because of their words. That is so important. I pray not only for these, because you go back to John 17, where he said, Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their words. Well, when you go back again in John 17, that was a time he did not pray for, for the world. He prayed for those God gave him first. And that's why I say first things first. Sometimes we always run in trying to say, get somebody saved. And I got this many people saved today. And, and I baptized this amount of people today. But sometimes we are not understanding because a person was justified, that doesn't mean that's the end. That is only the beginning, but sometimes we do not even speak about justification in the first place. People need to be justified by their faith. Then they need to be baptized, but they only should be baptized if they know who Yeshua Jesus is. And I will not baptize anyone that does not know who Yeshua Jesus is. Only thing you need to go back for the unit said, here's water. What can hinder me from being baptized? And Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, and he said, I believe that Yeshua the Messiah is the Son of God. In other words, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That's why you go right back to Roman. Out of the heart, man believeth unto righteousness, and confession is made unto salvation. So we're just telling people, say a sinner's prayer, and we're baptizing them. We're not doing it God's way. That's our way. So if a person doesn't know who Yeshua Jesus is, I will not baptize them. That's why when I would baptize people, I would ask them, do you believe? I want to know what you believe because that's what the unit said. What will hinder? In other words, what's going to stop me? If you don't believe, that's what should stop you because you're wasting your time. Remember Simon's words. Matthew 16, 16, focus 14 through 28. I'm not going there, but if uh, you go to Matthew 16, 16, 14 through 28, that's when Simon Peter confessed who Yeshua 
was and that show you that God revealed that to him from heaven. 1721. That they may, not that they will, not that they shall, that they may all be one. There go a perfect example of that word one. That they may all be one just as you, Father, are united with me and I with you. I pray that they may be united with us. I do not understand how some people can get a revelation of the word one and the word us. Read it again. That they may all be one. Just as. He explaining it. I want them to be one just as. Just as you, Father, are united with me, in other words, you, Father, are in me, and I with you, I in you, I pray that they may be united with us, so that the world may believe that you sent me. And sadly to say, many do not believe that Yeshua didn't come on his own. So they're not one as the Father and the Son are one, as the disciples was one, as they were sure, because they believe something else other than what is written down in the Word of God. That's why he said, I pray that they may be united with us so the world may believe that you sent me. That's what Yeshua want the world to believe. That's what we are to be teaching people who God is, who Yeshua is, who the Rush Harkosh is, so people can become one. As his father and Yeshua, they are one. How those disciples was one, we are to be one as well. Now he speaks of the glory. And people feel like, well, God is not going to give his glory to anyone else. Well, that's true. He gave it to Yeshua. But Yeshua gave it to his disciples. Listen to what he said. The glory which you have given to me. In other words, the glory God gave to him. I have given to them same glory his father gave to his son. His son turned around and gave it to his followers. Those who was following not just believing but those who was following him. Glory which you have given to me I have given to them so that they may be one. See the word is what? Maybe. Maybe. That they may be one. Just as we're one. Because when you think of maybe, uh, that's what it is. Maybe. He prayed that they would be one. Because he know everybody's not going to be one. That's why. And sadly to say, when you try to get people to come together and be united by through the truth, that's what really unite people, should unite people, is the truth. Before we get united in the uh, in the flesh, in numbers, you know, you have many numbers and people just might not be united in the word. It might just be united when you're bringing bodies together, but not in the body of Yeshua, the Messiah. The glory which you have given to me, I have given to them so that they may be one just as we are one. How more plain can that be? That we are to be perfectly one. The same way him and his father was one. The same way those disciples was one. Although they separated at one time. The Bible shows us that. How Paul went and took somebody with them. I think it was Mark. And one took Mark or some, something like that. But they came what? They was united. They came back together. And they was one. As our churches are separated. The body of Christ, our meeting places are separated. Uh, we have all these denominations and 
all this racism, even in the body, that's what I what really get me. We have the nerve to say we love God and Jesus is our Lord and Savior, but we're racist. And when I say racist, I'm speaking to everyone because many people, they are racist and they do not even realize they are racist. Haters. Because of something somebody else did. Then we won't make it, people. Oh, you'll go to a heaven if you want to you're sure, but you definitely will not enter into the gates. That's the big difference. So we're going to be judged for the good and the evil we have done. And those who are doing evil and has not repent, they're going to be cast back down to hell according to the word of God. Do you want somebody to go to hell? Not me. Why do you think Yeshua talked about hell? If he wanted us to go there, he wouldn't warn us about it. If I want a car to hit you, I won't warn you about the car. <laughs> Common sense. I unite, 23, I unite with them and you with me so that they may be completely, perfectly one. And the world thus realize that you sent me. What does he want the world to realize? That he didn't come on his own. That God sent him. And many people are not focusing on who sent and who came. We just get it all messed up because the Bible says, Yeshua said, I am my father one. No, he didn't mean one of the, one of the same. He means there was one agreement. We're to be in one agreement. That's why I say agree. All of you on what you say. So he agreeing with his father. Lord have mercy. I united with them and used me so that they may be completely, which means perfectly one, as King James said. And the world thus realized that you sent me and that you have loved them just as you have loved me. Well, he wants the world to realize that that God did not only love his first begotten son, but God loved the world. That's why we have John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son, that whomsoever believeth, whomsoever continue to believe in him, not out of him, should not perish, not shall, but have everlasting life. And so he want the world to realize that his father loved them just as his father loved him. So if God was there for his son, what makes us think God is not there for us? But what's the difference? His son obeyed him. That's why. King James 30, 23. I am them, so you see, you united. Is in so King James used in complete Jewish Bible united, which is the same. I and them, <clears throat> and thou and me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me. Remember, <coughs> last week we was focusing us on the morning <clears throat> on that word known and know. <laughs> <coughs> Actually, excuse me, it was Sunday morning. Known and know. They have not known me. These have known me. They don't know me. Hallelujah. 24. Father, I want those you have given me. This is what he wants. To be with me where I am, so that they may see my glory, which you has given me. Remember when he said, Father, glorify your son. God said, I have glorified you, and I'll glorify you again. So he said, so that they may see my glory, which you have given me, because you loved me before the creation of the world. 
show, the show us, you know, putting your show back in the beginning. In the beginning. Let us make man in our own image. He was there in the beginning. That's why the Bible says all things was made for him through him. Uh, 25. I'm glad we're going to finish it. Praise God. 25. Righteous Father, because God is righteous. God is not unrighteous, and God is holy. Righteous Father, the world has not known you. Notice that. Remember, eternal life is to what? To know. So listen to what he said. Righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you. And these people have known that you sent me. What people is he speaking of? The one, you start from John chapter number one, the one he's speaking of, he's praying for them because God gave them to him. He's praying for them. So now he said, but I have known you and these people have known. Notice, he didn't say believe. These people have known that you sent me. Well, everybody don't know that. Sometimes people say, I believe it, but I'm not sure. Now watch where Yahshua said. I made your name known to them. So let's show us again. Yeshua Jesus is the one that made his father known to his followers. God the Father is the one that made Yeshua known. Listen to what he said. I made your name known to them, those followers, those you have given me, not everybody, the one he gave, God gave him. And I will continue to make it known. Other words, sometimes people say, well, why do you keep saying the same thing? You ought to continue. <laughs> That's why. I will continue to make it known. Why? So that the love with which you have loved me Maybe in them, and I myself may be united with them. This is one of the most powerful, perfect chapters in the Bible that I can find that show us who God is, who Yeshua is, and who that one is. We are to be one in Yeshua the Messiah. One mean unified. One mean agreement. One mean many. And some people do not understand that word one. And that's why they feel like, well, God the Father and Yeshua Jesus and the Holy Ghost is one. No, they're not. They are separate. Because you'll never find that in the Bible. You say, how can you say that? Because God sent Yeshua Yeshua went back and sent the Rosh HaKosh, Holy Ghost, from God that would continue to come out from God. So that's how we know. We know because Yeshua Jesus said, If anyone say anything against the Son of Man, I will forgive him. But if anyone blaspheme the Rosh HaKosh, the Holy Ghost, he has never forgiven us. That's how I know and so that's why we search the scriptures and let the scriptures do what? Explain the scriptures. Now, last week, I used uh, John 16, Sunday 1 through 3, to uh, show just as and so forth, and not knowing the Father nor Yeshua, but then the Spirit is taking me back to John chapter 16. And so I did this with the book of Daniel because that's the way the Spirit was leading me, starting with 12, going all the way back. And sometimes that's good because it kind of think of, uh, kind of reminds me, if you think of a person, you're going to probably think of the person first, and then you think of something they said. And so when I go to John chapter 17, uh, uh, verse 1 through 3, 
It reminded me of what Yeshua said in John chapter number 16. And so it's good to study those entire chapters and use references to let them explain themselves. Hallelujah. I finished that right on time so I can get off before somebody hang up on me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Anyone have anything to say before we close? Any questions, any comments, any prayer requests, any praise report? Hey, hey I want to thank God for the word, girl. You brought the word on tonight, and I want to thank God for it because all those words that you bring is applied to all of us, when, especially when we're not hearing and being obedient to it. So I want to thank God for that. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Anyone else? Anyone else? At least I think I have at least three on the line. At least three. I believe. <laughs> <laughs> One probably uh, have it on mute doing something else. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Focus, focus, focus. <laughs> Once again, thank you all for joining me. I pray the word of God was a blessing to you. Just in case anyone out there that is not in the family of God, not sure or one thought they were, and then all of a sudden you stop believing what you first believed, go back and believe the report of the Lord. Not so much the report of the man, of man because many times men are given different reports than the report of the Lord. Always remember the report gave God gave of his son. And that is, this is my beloved son. And whom I am well pleased. This is my beloved son. Hear ye him. So God want us to hear the voice of Yeshua as in the book of Hebrews chapter number one. In sundry time, God spoke to the people through the prophets. But now in these last days, God is speaking to us through his son. When we can read the word of God and understand the word of God, God is speaking to us through his son. In other words, we can hear the voice of Yeshua Jesus. You can hear the voice of Yeshua Jesus just like you're hearing my voice. But you would never in this earth hear the voice of God the Father. Because if you could, Yeshua would be a liar. He said, you have never heard my father's voice at any time, nor seen his shape. And that's in there more than one time about not hearing God's voice. Israel was afraid of hearing God's voice. But many times people think they was hearing the voice of God. They was hearing the voice of the Son of God because he was always there from the beginning as we went through the book of Daniel, seeing him in the lion's den, the holy watcher so we can see him from the book of genesis if we just look for him and that's why the bible teaches us once at the end of the world the messiah christ appeared before the father to put away sin forever that means yeshua died before the foundation of this world it just wasn't manifest to a lot of people it just wasn't made known to a lot of people as the Hebrew boys, they saw the one that looked like the Son of God in that fire furnace. And so sometimes we do not realize that Yeshua was always there with his father. He grew up with his father. His father trained him. And that's why the Bible says he shall be called the Son of God. He told us what, what Yeshua should be called. He should be called the Son of God. So if we do not have the Son, we are without the Father. The only way we can have the Father is to have the Son. That's why Yeshua says no one can come unto the Father except how? Through me. That's a door there. That we must go the right way. We must go through Yeshua in order to get to his Father. In other words, we can't do it. We just beating our heads up against the wall because it's a door, it's a blockage there. We can't do it. 
And so we learn of him. Get to know him. Get to call upon him. Get to say, Lord, I don't understand all of this. Make it known to me. Give me wisdom. Give me knowledge. Above all, give me understanding. We ask him for all the other stuff. But are we asking for wisdom and knowledge and understanding? Are we asking him to, to, to help us to seek his face? See, I love that scripture when he said, uh, the Lord said, the Lord said, the scripture said, the Lord said, seek ye my face. And my heart said, Lord, your face will I seek. When I read that scripture, it was so powerful to me because he said, do this. But the person heart need to say they're going to do it. Lord, you said, seek ye my faith. And my heart said, Lord, your face I will see. And that's what happened with Judah. Judah decided they were going to seek the Lord with all their hearts. And he was found of them because they were looking for him. And see, many times we stopped looking because we thought we found him already. Some of us found him and we lost him. Kind of like those disciples. They knew who he was, and then they didn't know who he was. He appeared to them three times. But there came a time in their lives where they said, now we're sure. How many of us are very, very sure who Yeshua is? He's truly the son of the living God. And I'll preach that until the day he takes me out of here. I don't care what else. I do care what somebody else say, but when it comes to me changing what God said, going with what they said, uh-uh, I will not do it. I will stand on that, rooted, unmovable, because God's word is true. And that's why the Bible says, who will believe the report of the Lord? You didn't say report of man. Who will believe the report of the Lord? That's a report that God gave of his dear son. Who's going to believe it? I do believe and I receive and I walk in it. Hallelujah. So just in case you haven't been justified, have not been justified by your faith, if you believe on God and you believe God raised Yeshua Jesus from the dead, that's what justify you. But then you are to get to learn of him so you can confess him like Simon Peter, thou art the Messiah, the Christ, the son of the living God. And so he can confess you and thou art Simon Peter. Upon this rock, I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That's the report that we need to stand on. That's the confession that we need to make. That's why be careful what come out of your mouth. That's why he said, I'm praying for those who might believe on me through their own words. That means what, what you're saying with your own mouth. That's what it means. That's why I said, if. We confess with our mouth the Lord Yeshua, the Lord Jesus, and believe in our heart that God raised him, Yeshua Jesus, from the dead. Thou shalt be saved out of the heart. Man believeth unto righteousness, and confession is made unto salvation. Romans 10, 13, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Mark 16, 16, he that believeth, he that continues to believe and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned, but there are two baptisms. One is water, as John baptized with water. Yeshua is baptized with the word of Holy Ghost, letting us know there are two baptisms. And so life is a process. The word of God, we grow. Like a baby start out on milk, they move from milk to meat. They start out as a child, they go from child, children to becoming what? Mature. And we're to be mature people in Christ. Be no more children tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine where man lay in wait to deceive. That's why we have people going back and forth, in and out, and all of that. I believe today, now I'm not sure this one said that, this one said this. I'm not sure what to believe. Get in your Bible and believe the word of God. Hallelujah. If we confess our sins, we're faithful to just to forgive us for our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Proverbs 28, he that confesses and forsakes his sins shall have mercy. But he that confesses and forsakes not his sins will not prosper. So if you have not confessed, yes, sure. Repeat after me. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. I confess with my mouth the Lord, yes, sure, the Lord Jesus. And I believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. And out from my heart 
I am to continue to believe that unto righteousness. So, Father, I thank you for knowing our hearts. Because you searches our hearts. You tries our hearts. That's what the fire is. You try our hearts. So, Lord, I pray that you burn out everything in us that's not of you. God, everything that's not of your word, cast it out. Fill us, oh God, with your word, because Yeshua says the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, and they are life. So God, fill us with your word, so we can have more of your spirit, and we can have life in abundance. God, I pray for all those out there, oh God, who are suffering, oh God, those who are sick, those who are shut in, those who are not sure how they're going to get food. God, I pray that you will have mercy, oh God, and they will learn how to call upon you because David says, i never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed beg for bread. So God, I thank you. I thank you, Father, for providing for all our needs according to your riches and glory in Yeshua the Messiah. And God, I pray for this world as a whole. Have mercy, Father. Have mercy upon this world, Lord. Have mercy, O oh God. Let us be able to discern right from wrong. Let us be able to see darkness from light and light from darkness. Help us to be able to rightly divide the word of truth. God, I thank you for your freedom. And I thank you, O oh God, for us choosing to choose that which is good. God, I ask you to bless us in our going in and our coming out. Bless us in the city, in the field. Help us to pull down every stronghold, everything that exalts itself above your word. God, bring it down in the name of Yeshua. And God, I pray for my friend that I saw on Facebook today where the mother left her children with her husband and went away. God, I pray that you touch her heart that you remove the darkness from her eyes and let her know that those children are hers and it's up to her to raise them, train them up in the way they should go. God, I ask you to have mercy, Lord. Bring her back, oh God. Take out that mind and give her the right mind. Let that mind be in her. That's also in Yeshua the Messiah that she could say, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. God, I bless you and give you praise in the name of Yeshua. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you all. You all be blessed. The Lord love you with the love of Yeshua the Messiah.